Before we start today's video, I would like to take a moment to say thanks to all my patrons. As I said many times before, I wouldn't be able to keep doing this without you, so thank you so much for all your support. I'd also like to say thanks to Richter and Joshua for their tier 3 sub this month, and special thanks to James Williams Bond and Michael Capone for their tier 4 sub this month. Before we start the video, I would also like to remind you that my Unity and C-Sharp course is live on Udemy and you can click the card on the screen right here to read more about it. In the last devlog, I showed you how I completed the player controller by adding movement and attack animations. So now that we have a player controller that can move around the world, I feel like it's time to start working on the zombie. The first thing I need to do was to add a model to the scene. I'm going to use a placeholder model right now, but later I'm going to replace it with a zombie. So this male character here is going to be just fine for testing and trying out different stuff. Before I started to mess around with the AI, I wanted to give the character some life. To do that, I created an animation controller and added an island animation to the character. I wasn't happy with the initial result. It looked like the character was floating around in the air while it was idling. My initial thought to fix this was to make sure that all the root transforms were baked into the poses. However, after checking the boxes and testing this out again, I still had the character floating around in the air. And then I suddenly remembered that I might have forgotten to enable the foot IK for this animation, so I checked it out and I actually got a way better result. It's not 100% perfect, but I'm pretty sure it isn't noticeable during gameplay. And then it was time to get going with the AI. Even though it's been a while since I used the built-in Navma system, I was pretty surprised about how much some of the components have changed over time. But after a bit of digging around, I managed to make my zombie into a Navma's agent and bake a mesh for the zombie to walk on. And then came the hardest part. I think I used about 3 hours on this. It was so simple though when I figured out how to do it. Um, but I had such a hard time making the character move based on root motion and AI at the same time. As you can see in the video, I'm trying to make the AI follow me when I move away from it. But the AI would just be stuck in idle without moving no matter what I did. Um, but there were different things that uh, I thought could be wrong. Um, first of all, the first thing I thought was uh, the fact that the character might be stuck in the ground somehow or the agent might be stuck in the ground so I tried to move it up and down and it didn't really help anything, it still got stuck uh, right on the same spot. I figured that I need to rewrite some of the code for the zombie to make sure that the agent could move and... Success! I actually managed to make the agent move, however, uh, the zombie didn't move with the agent, so I wasn't able to see in game that the agent was actually moving because the zombie was still stuck in idle. After doing a bit of research, I came to the conclusion that I need to make the zombie script handle the root motion and not the animator itself. So because of this, I needed to rewrite the whole zombie script. Coding your own games is easier than you think. And at this point, I just want to test if the zombie could follow a target, so I just hard coded the player as the target the zombie would follow right away when the game started. After I rewrote the script, I was able to make the zombie model follow along with the Navmas agents. As you can see on the video, I successfully made an AI that was able to chase the player around the map. The next step would be to make the zombie idle when the game started and only chase the player if the player got close enough to aggro it. This task should be fairly easy to handle. I simply add a sphere collider to the zombie that will function as the aggro range and then I wrote a few lines of collision code to handle the aggro. And then it was finally time to test out the new aggro functionality. Ah, it's Trump! How is that even possible and where is it actually going? I guess I'll try to follow and see where it's going. Two hours later. Okay. What is it? Oh, no way. It's actually building a wall? For how long is it gonna keep going? One eternity later. How is this even possible? And why is that even an option? 
After changing the agent type from Donald Trump to humanoid, I was able to make the zombie aggro me and chase me when I got close to it. And that concludes this devlog. We're not 100% done with the zombie yet because we still need to make it able to attack us, reset if we escape it and make it die and so much more. If you liked the video then don't forget to smash the like button, also don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get updates when I upload new videos. So thank you so much for watching.